In this example, we're given that y1 equals x squared, this function, is the solution of the following homogeneous linear second order differential equation, x squared y double prime plus 2xy prime minus 6y equals 0. And we need to find the second solution. Now notice that this is a particular solution, right? It's free of arbitrary constants. So we need to find another second solution like that. So the process that's usually used to find a second solution to this kind of equation consists of reducing the order. So going from the second order um, differential equation to the first order differential equation, which we know how, how to solve, right? But if we try to apply the process of reduction of order to a general case, then we're going to end up with this formula that basically tells us how to find the second solution. So y2 that's the second solution. And we're going to try to answer this question using the formula. So to make the process easier, we're going to split it into steps. But first, we're going to start by writing our equation in standard form. So the standard form of any linear differential equation is when the first term has no coefficient. So in other words, we want to rewrite this equation without x squared. So in the first step, step one, we're going to put equation in the standard form. Which is, let me write down the standard form in general. It's y double prime plus coefficient of the next term, its function, we'll call it p of x, y prime plus y with its coefficient, that coefficient is going to be called q, q of x, y equals 0. Right, so for our example, we have to divide every term by x squared, right, so that's going to be y prime plus 2x y prime over x squared minus 6y over x squared equals 0. And that's y double prime plus 2 over x y prime minus 6 over x squared y equals 0. So that is standard form. So standard form. Okay, once it's in the standard form, we're ready to apply the formula. But as I said, we're going to split it into steps. So let's look a little bit closer at that formula. So it looks like we have here y1 of x, that's the given for a solution, right? Times, times this integral. Inside the integral, we have a quotient. In the numerator, we have something that looks very similar to integrating factor, right? Except it has this negative sign. So it's e raised to the power negative, and then another integral, integral of p of x dx. And in the denominator, it's, it's simply the first solution, the given first solution raised to the second power. So that part is easy. We're going to start by identifying function p of, p of x and integrating it so that we can set up the numerator. So step two, what is function p of x? Well, function p, p of x is the coefficient of y prime of the first derivative, right? So what is p of x in our example? Well, here's the coefficient of y prime. So that means that p of x is 2 over x. p of x is 2 over x. And integral of 2 over x dx equals 2 ln of x. So notice I'm not using the absolute value here. Um, I'm not going to use it, but I have to make a note and I'm going to write it at the end. I'm going to say that this solution is going to be valid on the interval where x values are positive, right? Let's, start, let's uh, find the numerator of this fraction. So in step 3, To 
simplify this, I'm going to put that um, that coefficient negative 2 inside the log. So that's e to the power ln of x to the power negative 2. And now using the properties of logarithms, that simplifies to x to the power negative 2, which is same as 1 over x squared. Okay, so that's all the numerator um, of that fraction. And um, I think we're ready to set up the entire, inter entire integral. It's going to be step 4. So step four is to integrate. You can see it's step four is to integrate what we just obtained from step three, one over x squared divided by the given solution, which is x squared, y, y1 equals x squared, raised to the second power. So that's x squared, which is y1, raised to the second power according to the formula dx so that is integral of 1 over x squared over x to the fourth power dx and here I will simplify this complex fraction it's 1 over x squared the numerator multiplied by the reciprocal of the denominator so it's times 1 over x to the fourth power dx That is integral of 1 over x to the 6th power dx, which is same as integral of x to the power negative 6 dx, and we're ready to integrate. So power will increase by 1, x negative 6 plus 1 is negative 5 divided by that value over negative 5. So notice that I'm not using any constants anywhere, so I already integrated twice in step uh, in step three and in step four. I'm integrating. I'm not writing any constants. Um, we're trying to find a particular solution, and all those constants will appear once we write down a general solution. Okay, so that was step four. And finally, okay, so what we did in step four, we found the result of this integral. Right? We evaluated that integral. So it means that the last step is just to take the result and multiply by the given solution, right? Y1, x squared in our case. So in other words, we're ready to look at the second solution. So uh, step five, y2 equals y1 is x squared y1 times uh, okay, so that's negative 1 over 5. I'll just write it like that for now. x to the power negative 5 over negative 5. I haven't simplified it, but I'll do it now. So that's C step 4. Right, so that's same as negative 1 over 5 times x squared times 1 over x to the fifth power. I changed that negative power to a positive. And it's the same as 1 over 5 times 1 over x to the third power. Since it's a homogeneous differential equation, we can actually ignore this constant. We can just simply say that the second solution is 1 over x cubed. And also I'm going to make a note that it's valid on the interval from 0 to infinity where x values are positive, right? Okay, so this, um, uh, it's also important to note here that through this process, the process of reduction of order, we obtain solution that's linearly independent from the first solution. And it's going to be a good exercise to check that. Remember, if you find a wrong scan for this solution or for this function and the one that we call the first solution, why aren't you going to confirm that the round scan is non-zero on this interval. So these are linearly independent solutions. And then since they're linearly independent solutions, we can write down the general solution for that homogeneous differential equation. And the general solution is going to have this form. y equals c1. And then I'm going to write the first solution, y1 
squared plus C2 and then Y2, the second, the second solution, 1 over X cubed. Or that part I can write as C2 over X cubed. But that is a general solution. General solution. 